let's yeah. I'll probably ask all of you to make sure that you can record. And then I need to hit this button. And we are live on Facebook, guys. I think we're going to end up with a bunch of people here joining in just a little bit. Um, here's what my thought was for this. So this is our pet-friendly agent um, Rolodex. We all know that as agents, there are certain things that we need in our Rolodex, the regular things, the electrician, the plumber. Um, but as pet-focused agents um, and rescue-focused agents, I think there's a whole nother piece that gets added in there. And so my thought was, and let me get Chris in here. My thought was here that we would just go around in a circle and we'll do our regular stuff too. Like we'll do our regular electricians and, and all of those people too. And I apologize if my dogs start barking here. Um, we'll do all the regular real estate type, type stuff that goes in our Rolodex. And then I've got, I'm actually going to, I've got a, list that I started and I'm going to try to keep up with and then we'll share it with everybody so that we have a whole list because I think everybody that's in this business knows that not only is this great for your clients but it's also really good relationship building right to be able to to know all these different people in these different um different professions so um did you hear that Chris uh sort of <laughs> we're just gonna go around in a circle and everybody's going to name somebody that's in their Rolodex for their clients. And we'll do real estate ones. We'll do real estate ones and our pet, like all of them, everything. Oh, okay. Them. I just wrote down categories, you know. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I just want to go through and we'll just go, you know, this is who I have. And we'll do the real estate ones and the pet focused ones. Cool. You want to go first since my dog. Sure. Is <laughs> sure. Hi, everybody. Hey, Chris. Hi, I'm Chris Cash in Illinois. Um, when I have a uh, closing with a client, uh, a buyer client that is got a, has a dog, particularly, but even when they have a cat too, um, I give them some names of, of cat sitters if they have a cat, but more so dog focused, I give them a list of the area dog parks. You know, some people are for dog parks, some aren't, but I let people know where, um, and, and the link, because most of them require a permit. So I give them the link of where to buy their permit for the dog area dog parks. I give them a list of um, local- Let's go one at a time. Let's go one thing at a time. Oh, oh okay, yeah. sorry. Next. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna add the dog parks in. Where's my list? Okay, I'll add dog parks. All right. Who's next? Who wants to go next? I'll go next. I give them um, the vets because that's always a big question all the time about the best vets in the area and then groomers because everyone here in Florida needs their dog groomed. <laughs> so I said veterinarian and groomers, Joe, because everybody in Florida needs their dog groomed. Got it. People will usually ask me about um, like pet sitters or boarding, um, you know, especially sellers during the process. It's like, where can I take my dogs during showings and inspections and things like that? Um, and sometimes I've actually taken the dogs, <laughs> taken them for walks, rides in the car, things like that. Um, but we do have some um, kind of drop in boarding that they can do. So it just makes it easier when you're trying to sell a house to get the dogs out. One thing to add to that is you can make good relationships with those and they'll give you a discount. So what I do is I always encourage my sellers to, um, or my, just that three days when you're moving to board for those three days, the day before the day that you move and the day after. And in doing that, I get a discount from them. And the boarding company, the boarding facilities will usually give you a discount because most of the time your people are closing on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. So it's times that they're not that full anyway. Mm -hmm. And so just a thought, a lot of them, you can make an agreement with them and either pay for it or get, get clients a big discount. That's a good idea because it's hard to move 
and keep track of the dogs at the same time. <clears throat> yep. Good. Who wants to go next? Meg? Um, yeah, so where I am, we have a big problem with um, feral cats. So if I have clients moving out to a more rural area, I've got a list of um, resources for them, just TNR programs, you know, local rescues that could help and things like that. I like that. That's one I don't think a lot of people think about is the TNR programs. Loretta, you want to name somebody that's on your Rolodex? And it can be real estate. It can be your regular people if you want to. Just name one category that's on your Rolodex. Um, I give out-of-towners who move in a list of the grocery stores. Ooh, I yeah. like that. Yeah, Never we have a, Yeah, we have quite a few different ones and everybody wants to know which one. Because if it's not to their area, you know, they don't have a Kroger where they live. They don't know that Kroger offers a lot more than a food lion would. Um, so depending on what their shopping needs are, <laughs> let's say, I'll, um, I don't want to rank them, but I'll just say this, this store has more variety and this is how the distance to your house. I like that. I really like that. Thank you. Cassandra, what you got? I joined late. What are you asking for? So what we're doing is we're just going around and naming off some category that's in our Rolodex, whether it's real estate related, pet related. So far, let me look. You know what? I'm going to share my screen here so we can keep our list going in the background. So we have dog parks, veterinarians and groomers, boarding and I don't make those two. Uh, boarding and pet sitters, TNR programs, grocery stores, which I thought was great um because i don't think that's one we think about who else do you have in your rolodex that you give to your clients to say hey here's some people that whether it's pet related or real estate related or whatever well it is i actually do have a list of all of our rescues because we have specific cat rescues we have and there's i think there's 13 right now that we have so um especially if they're talking about getting a pet for their new home that's the first place that i'll tell them is to go to a rescue so I, I talk about the rescue as much as I can. I like that. I like that. And you guys all invite your clients to like every rescue event, right? If oh, nothing yeah. else, use it as a touch, as a reason to contact them. Um, what should I add in there? I am going to add in, I'm just going to add in a normal one. Um, I'll add in plumbers because we all know that's the one that, that's one that comes up and it always comes up at a really bad time. It's never a good time that you call a plumber. <laughs> yeah, I got a phone call from my client last night. They've been in the house about a year, young couple, military. Husband insisted on doing the repair himself until he finally cried wolf. He says, all right, call Loretta. She'll know someone. <laughs> Don't you love that? Yes. Yeah. Are we back around to Chris now? Did everybody name one? I think we're back around to Chris. What you got, Chris? Okay, I, um, I'm all about supporting local small businesses. So I will tell them that, you know, you can Google where the nearest PetSmart is or what have you, but I give them a list of the smaller independent owned pet boutiques because we have a lot of them in our area. And one is called Two Bostons. And I have a stack of coupons from Two Bostons that gives them a discount off their first purchase. So it gets encourages them to shop at a local mom and pop um, store for their feed, feed and toy needs and give them a coupon too. I love it. Nice. Who gave us veterinarians? That would be me. Okay, what you got? So one of the things that I give my clients here are roofers because we need roofers all the time in Florida because of all the thunderstorms and obviously because of the recent hurricane. Well, and you guys had a whole like roofing scandal thing that was going on in Florida, didn't you? Where it was hard to get insurance and stuff. Cause we yes, had kind of the same because thing here. People let their roofs get old and then they put in a claim rather than know that they need to save for the roof. 
So they were going 19, 20 years. Our roofs are like 15 year roofs. Now I think the builders are putting on 25s, but people go to the end and then it shows up on inspection. Then they want to put in a claim. So yeah, there was, we get a lot of people that come in that aren't licensed and insured and buyers or owners don't check and then they give money and they get ripped off. So yeah. Understood. That's the one thing I will say, roofers, um, make sure you have your right guys. Make sure you have somebody that you, you can use over and over again that you trust um have them do your house first message me this morning because he did a repair from hurricane ian who we, who's next who's next in our line i think i am um so i have a couple people that um do organizing um so especially, you know, if you're working with an older client that has 30 years worth of treasures <laughs> built up in their house and, um, you know, sometimes just going through everything and purging and packing is overwhelming. Um, so I have a couple people that that's what they do is they help, you know, go through everything. What do you save? What do you donate? What do you throw away? Um, and they just charge by the hour and you know, sometimes I'll give them, you know, a couple of free hours, um, but it just makes the process easier for the sellers, especially if they're older. I love that one. Oh, that's one I don't think about. Um, who's next? Is it Loretta now or is it? I'm not seeing everybody because I shared my screen. I think it's me. Maybe. Oh. I think <laughs> um, I got in touch with a couple of people who do house cleaning and carpet cleaning and got coupons for my clients for them. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. And I would make sure that they are specialists in pet smells. <laughs> One thing I'll add in there, guys, ozone machines used to be like $2,000. Now they're like seven or 800 bucks. Um, I have one that we just bought. We give it to every single client when they list their house with us. And it does two things. One, it obviously it helps with the smells, but also I never have to tell somebody their house smells. Everybody uses it. It's not, that's part of what happens when you work with us. So just a thought guys, because it saves you having to go, hey, your house smells, go do this. Um, house carpet cleaning. And let's put pet smell specialist how's that okay now is it loretta okay um i use a lot of these these are good ideas here um i would say i don't think we've talked about landscaping or grass cutting um we have a lot of, you know heavy military presence here so <clears throat> if they're deployed or about to deploy um or before they arrive here, if they're coming from um, out of the area, we'll, um, I'll give them the names of some, of some companies, one or two companies. Absolutely. And I think with landscaping, knowing, like talking to the landscapers so they know, hey, we're going to have pets here, like what, what can be planted and what can't, what should be planted, what shouldn't kind of thing, I think is also probably a valuable um, kind of feather to add on to that you know mm -hmm. um, that's one of the things we need to do is we need to get a list for everybody of here's the plants that we need to keep away right um you know there's somebody we didn't hear from okay oh well, cassandra we already heard from you but you got you still got to go again yes you heard me <laughs> you still got to go again um, okay i've got to go again i was just thinking i mean we all probably have a ton, but um, glass, not windows, but glass replacement, um, especially if you've got family with children and if they're moving into town, they don't know who to go to and you've got your different um, glass places that are good at what they do. So that's a big one for me. Love it. Love it. Yeah. That's a good resource for listings because our home inspection item, you know, we have a lot of, you know, the seals are busted, they're fogged. And while you could argue that's cosmetic, and then some will argue that it compromises the integrity of the window, some buyers, depending on the market, will insist the seller replace those. 
So instead of replacing the whole window, that's a great resource to have. I'm glad she mentioned that. And there is, and I don't know if these are everywhere, there are companies now that can recharge those windows too. Oh. And so, um, and it's like way cheaper. Like I think the guys we use charge us 75 bucks the first window and like 30 or 35 the next for every other one. So that's something to keep in mind too. Um, kind of keep in your in your back pocket as a way to save save a client from actually having to replace pane of the glass. Well, um, well, how would you, we find, how would we look somebody up like that? Is that a glass place that does that or is this a different? It is a glass place. Let me look and I'll see what they call it. Okay. Because then I think you could search by that, but it's a lot cheaper. Um, I mean, we've even done it in picture windows and things like that, where, oh. where we know it's going to be really expensive to replace the glass. Nice. Um, Caitlin, you haven't got to talk. So what we're doing is we're just going around in a circle and everybody's naming somebody on their on their Rolodex, whether it is pet related or not. I'll sh um, share my screen with you here real quick so you can actually see what we have so far. But we've got a pretty good list. Um, who do you have in your Rolodex that a lot of people don't think to add? Do I have you, Caitlin? Are you there? Okay, I will go. All righty. Who is in mine? Well, I'm going to do trainers because that's a big one for me. Um, having Tommy is huge, not only, um, not only for helping the rescue and things like that, but also for helping clients when it comes to insurance or it comes to rowdy neighbor dogs and those kind of things. So definitely having a trainer in your back pocket, I think is a, is a big one. Chris, I think it's you. Uh, I give them a couple uh, businesses that do uh, dog pooper scooper services where they <laughs> pick up the daunting task of picking up poop. We have a couple of them in the area that do it. That's a big one when you're listing a house mm -hmm. because not everybody cleans up their dog's waste Yeah, and some yards are pretty bad. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I will say that that's a, I think that's a big one. Who's next? Bev? We have companies that will come through and clean your trash cans because again, it's super hot here. <laughs> so I give them that. Um, also, I work with a lot of investors, so I have property management companies, so I can give them several of those so that they can hook up with the best property management. We also need to give them pool companies because we have pools open year round here. Awesome. The dumpster cleaning one, man, that's, that's another pet thing though too, because those things start to leak at the bottom and you know what I mean? Dogs can get really sick just from, from getting close to that. But I think that's a big, and, and also wildlife. Well, our HOAs require that you keep your trash cans inside your garage. Oh, okay. So they can start to get pretty rancid when your garage is hot. And so you need trash can cleaning service. Absolutely. I love that one from a, um, from a wildlife standpoint too. Um, who is our next one? Who is it? I think probably me. Um, okay. Oh, so, Dawn, yeah. So I'm in West Michigan and it obviously gets very cold and snowy here in the winter time. And a lot of people here have fireplaces. Um, and so even for buyers, you know, during the inspection period, um, we do have, um, you know, companies that will do the inspections um, and then also repairs. So I have a couple of them on my list. Are there a bunch of them up here? Because we have fireplaces in a lot of houses here, but there's like two companies that'll do inspections. That's it. Yeah, there are, I think I've only got two inspectors on my list. Um, it's getting a little bit more difficult to find somebody to do repairs just because there are less companies than there were before. Um, I know I just had a, had a past client reach out to me and I think she had to call three or four before she found somebody that could even get her on the schedule. Yeah, so. It seems like 
I'm getting a lot more on inspection too, where inspectors are saying the firebox is cracked or it might be cracked. I think that's, I think they always say it might be. I don't think they ever say it is. Mm -hmm. um, but that's something I think we should all, we should all keep an eye on, especially those of us where, where it get, does get cold. Chris Cash. Can I interject? Yeah, absolutely. Um, regarding not being able to find companies, <coughs> There is a company here, it's called the Fire Safety Guys, and they are firemen that do this on their days off. So if you ever get caught in a jam, maybe you can call some local fire stations and ask if anybody, any of the guys do this. Ooh, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. I'm going to add that in. Or, or I bet they at least know, right? The fire right. stations at least know who do you, who you, hmm like that it's always the things that we don't think are going to be really exciting that end up exciting me like i didn't think chimneys was going to even be on the list <laughs> um who's next meg um out where i am we have a lot of septic tanks so i've got a list of, of people who to call if you need septic stuff <laughs> It will all, it also, at least around me, because I'm in a more suburban area, but I do a lot of them. It's probably the biggest question I get asked from agents within my office. Like, I don't know why I'm the poop guy at my office. So everybody calls me for septic stuff. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that everybody comes and says, Hey, can I, you know, can I pick your brain about this? So learn about septics, especially if you have anything that's on land. Um, it's, they can be. They can be challenging at times and they can be really, really easy at times. So definitely septic repairs and inspection. And the price has gone way up on installations for inspect for septic too. So just a heads up. Uh, who's our next one? Cassandra or Loretta? Either one. Why don't you go, Loretta? All right. Um... I've got two, I mentioned one. Um, dryer vent cleaning, leading cause of fires. Um, not, not very many people will think of that. Every now and then an inspector will put that on his report. So what I'd like to do is <clears throat> if I have a young buyer who would never think of this, um, you know, find out who is the seller. Is it a family? They use their dryer all the time and you have that lint filled up. Um, last time we had to hire a company, I think it cost like $130. So it's really not that expensive. The fire safety guys also do it too. So I call them as well, but there are companies that will do, uh, dryer vent cleanouts. I like that one. You know what I would love to do? And I know this is way a, uh, a pipe. Wouldn't it be neat if you could have a card that you could give to people that was just like, Hey, this just worked at your people and they could use any of your. I don't know that I see is that would be a cool thing to do where you gave your clients a card and then they were able to use it at all your, all your people. I don't know. These are the crazy things that go through my head. I know what you're talking about like the one the kids give out at the high schools where you can use yeah, it. something like that. I don't know. Just an idea. Um, all right. Who? All right. Now it's Cassandra. It's me now, and uh, Christina stole my septic because I have been dealing with septic all weekend. <laughs> oh, God bless you. If there's ever anything I, I can do, let me know. <laughs> no, it's, it's finding someone who can do the job. They're all backed up for weeks. I'm like, that's not how this was working now. But anywho, um, my other one is irrigation companies and people that can do uh, your shutoff in the winter and then the um, test in the spring especially if they've never had a watering system in their yard. They don't know any of those things. And my city requires the test, the backflow test. Absolutely. And that's one that if you, if you don't get on their schedule yeah. in September for the next spring, it's hard when you get. Close. Yeah. I ended up, yeah. I ended up paying $150 this past spring because I could not get anybody out and it's a $45 thing. So yeah. Right, right. That's a good one. Um, and we have a guy, and they showed up in July. <laughs> it's like you're a little late. <laughs> you know what? Thinking about that, and I'm going to add this one in 
because we're talking about seasonal things a little bit, um, the propane companies. Because again, that's one of those things that if you don't do it the right time of year, it's going to get, you know, it's a lot more expensive to buy propane in November than it is to buy it in July. Mm. So that's one of those things. Um, that's one of those things I think would be neat to make like a calendar where it's like, hey, remember to do this. Remember to do this this time of year. That'd be a neat thing. Um, who's next, Chris or Caitlin? Are you there? Caitlin, are you there? I don't think Caitlin is there. Um, Chris, what you got? Okay, a um, little bit of household self-promotion because my husband works for Invisible Fence for dogs. So I always give them my husband's number if they need an invisible fence. And then also regular uh, structural fence people if they want to go that route. And that's one that comes up on, I mean, every one of your clients either needs it. The other thing, and there are some, like heaven, I wish you could find, and maybe you can, like fence inspectors. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because they're so like, it seems like a lot of times when you have clients that buy a house with a fence, the dog gets out because it finds a hole that you didn't know about. I wish there was somebody that, I need to just, get a little dog that I can send around their house and see if we can get out. <laughs> <laughs> That's an idea though. Um, something that all of us maybe should be a little versed in is looking and finding those holes. You know, when we're walking around with clients, something to think about. Oh, uh, Bev, what you got? Locksmith. Oh yeah. Uh, AC company here and landscaping for sod oh sod yeah i have one dealing with that right now where we didn't do sod and they they have a white doodle they haven't had grass since they moved in in february or uh april oh my gosh they are not happy <laughs> yeah well i mean there you can't just plant seed here like you have to put sod down so everything has to have sod they can't yeah. you can't grow from seed at all not really. You might be able to like patch a small area, but for the most part, they lay sod everywhere. So, wow. Why is that? What was that, Christina? It's Loretta. Why is that? It's just so hot here that it, it the grass seed burns oh, okay. before it gets uh, able to root. So they have to put down sod. Gotcha. Okay. I know some places have like clay and stuff, but that's interesting. I mean, it's 76 right now. It's probably going to go up to 80 something by three o'clock. Huh. Wow. I would love that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Who's our next one? Dawn? Dawn comes after Beth. Yes, I think that's me. Um, so I have um, a moving company that I work with. And I will give my, um, I give my clients like a coupon, like a hundred dollar coupon if they use this moving company um, and they will do local or long distance. Um, or if you just need um, like appliances moved from one house to another and you don't have the means to do that, they'll actually do that. Cause I had sellers that took the washer and dryer out of the house and they weren't supposed to, but they didn't have a way to get to that. So I just called my movers and I said, can you please go to this address, grab the washer and dryer and bring it back to our house? And um, yeah, I think it cost me like 200 bucks. So Love it. Yeah, I'm sure they're great. And it is, I, I will say, interview several moving companies because that seems to be a, a hang up for me and my business is finding okay. one that, that, I, that I feel comfortable referring out all the time. So that, I think that's really cool when you can because it's so valuable. Oh, yeah. Um, Who's our next? Is it Meg or is it Loretta? I think it's Meg, right? Uh, sure. Um, we have a big problem with radon where I am. So I've got some, some companies that can help with that. Is there anybody that doesn't know what radon is that's on here that doesn't have radon in their area? We don't really I don't. have a problem with it here. Do you know what it is? I know what it is, but from living in New Jersey, but yeah, we don't have an issue with it as much here. So yeah, Loretta, it's a gas that comes up basically through your basement. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, 
um, been shown to cause cancer. And so we'll test for it. It's like a little piece that gets set in there for 48 hours. They come back and get it. And then it, the fix to it is they put a, a four inch PVC pipe through the floor of the, the basement. And then it goes all the way up through the top of the house and it has a little fan on it. Oh, okay. So, um, but if you ever have clients that are moving to Virginia and that comes up on their, their house, they're selling, you'll know what that is. We don't have basements here. That's why we don't have to deal with it. <laughs> right. Same here. Yeah. We're seeing it in walkout basements, high levels in walkout basements, which doesn't usually happen. Usually as long as part of it's open to air, you don't have that, but we've seen it a lot in walkout basements recently. Hmm. So just something, I don't know if it's just the area or, or what, um, we did used to mine uranium in, in St. Louis. So that, that also throws yeah. off. Um, who is our, who is next? Is it Loretta now, right? Okay. Um, power washing. And the more importantly, someone that does, that really knows what they're doing, not just with a truck and their own power washer, um, a real company, because they can also do roofs. It has to be a soft, you guys know this, but like a soft pressure washer. And right. I did mine for my house about two years ago. I had the, the roof because the roofer said, no, there's still life in it. It's, you know, just got those marks on it, but still has, it's still a good roof. So I hired someone who power washed the house and the roof and it really made it pop. I love it. And I will say, make sure that the chemicals being used, make sure that they're using the biodegradable chemicals or something that's not going to, not going to mess with the animals. Good point. You know, um, and I know most of them have like it's all over their stuff. Like we use this EPA, whatever, whatever. Uh, Cassandra. Sorry, it takes forever to unmute. Um, my other big one is electricians. They're never around when you need them. No. You have to have yeah. a buddy, it feels when like. When you said septic has gone up, electrical has gone up crazy. So replacing um, fuse boxes with circuit breakers used to be like $3,800. It's like $5,800 for a simple one. Wow. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, And even when he did the last one we did, and the last one we did was in February, he said just six months ago it would have cost this much, and now it's this much. So that's gone up as well. So if you guys, if you guys have a lot of, uh, if you guys have a lot of older houses and things like that, that's something to really know with your clients, because I know when I'm looking at them, I'm thinking, okay, it's going to be this to replace. That's twice as much. I mean, that's, that's a big jump. That's a good one. Um, Shelly, since you just, since you just got here, I'll tell you what we're doing is we're just going around in a circle and we're all naming somebody that's in our Rolodex, whether it's animal related, whether it's um, real estate related. I'm not sure if you can see our list here so far. We've got a pretty good list going. Mm -hmm. Do you have somebody that most people wouldn't think about? I threw in a couple in the chat. Dog friendly restaurants. I don't know if you have that. Ooh. I did a Google map of that for the greater Kansas City area for all the cities. Um, and then also um, photographers, um, pet photographers too. Ooh, I like that one. I may be doing a fall pet photo event to try to raise money. This is and one of my yeah, favorites. if you haven't voted for my Chevy, vote for my Chevy. He's top, he's going to be top dog for our city. That's awesome. I think yeah. I, I know I did. Okay, he's he's up by a hundred right now, but we have till <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> Oh, uh, Chris, what do you got? We're starting back. Oh, let's see. I think I might be near my end. Um, da, da, da. <laughs> I have one that you haven't mentioned that you absolutely should be the one to mention. Am I? Stagers? Oh, I don't think of that because I do. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys don't know, Chris was a... Uh, uh, interior designer in her previous life. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't often think of that because I just do it. And 
I would say somebody that knows how to hide dog beds, how to how to get things out of the way that are gonna be still needed, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know one. I'm sorry, not not pet related. Um, because I just found an awesome company that does this tile and grout repair and cleaning. Um, you know, oftentimes you see like pieces of the grout, you know, missing and they'll repair that. And then, you know, in showers and stuff, sometimes the grout doesn't look as bright as it did at, when it was new. And I'll tell you, this company comes in and makes it look like it's new again. It was amazing to me. So really? I, give, yeah, I give their name out all the time. That might be one because I, I love the grout cleaning because I think it, it it changes the look so much. Yeah, sometimes you don't even realize it because you, you know, it just over time, it gets a little bit more dull, a little bit more gray looking or whatever. But boy, once it's really cleaned, you know, if that's new. Did, did we just not know for the last 50 years that we could, that we could clean grout? When I had them do, when, yeah, when I had them do mine, I was shocked. That's I was like, awesome. oh my gosh, that's what color my grout really is. <laughs> well, especially with having dogs running all over. I mean, mm -hmm. grout gets so dirty so quick, you know. Um, it's funny that you it. say that because we do mostly tile floors here. So that's a huge one here. Yeah. <laughs> but so are furniture companies, especially for second homes or investments. If they buy something and they want to replace or upgrade the furniture, we need to know what furniture stores can help them with that so they have everything they need for it to be an investment property. Furniture stores, and I'm going to add in there just to go along with that, um, like secondhand type, you know what I mean? Like consignment stores? Yes, because I think that's where at least a lot of people that I know that do short-term rental, that's where they're getting their, their stuff you know um we have stores that are actually that's all they do is outfit um the rental houses because they know like how much oh, of everything you need to have for how big the house is and oh really yeah that's interesting sounds good like packages a, sounds like a plan i can a business plan i can put together because i need to add another one. yeah the, well they put it together in packages so if you want to spend twenty they they'll tell you what you can get for that and Depends on how much you want to spend on your investment property. John, really, Chris, that's a business do, you need. I want to do it for the Midwest. Nobody does it for Midwest investment properties. We need to chat about that. Mm -hmm. We need to chat about that. Um, who's Who comes after Bev? Dawn. No, I think that's me. Um, only because I'm dealing with, with it right now. Um, pest inspectors and exterminators. We have... We don't have too much of a problem here, but I've got one seller that, um, yeah, we had termites in the garage that got found during the inspection. So, yeah. I feel like there's a lot more termites recently. I don't know if anybody else feels like that, but I mean, I'd never come into it really in six, seven years of business. And then I had two last year. Yeah, yeah this, this I think is only the second one. We see more carpenter ants where I'm at. Um, and, you know, that can be a problem as well. But, um, yeah, fortunately, they're just contained to the garage and not the house at this point. So it's not going to be a huge fix, but it was good to have somebody, somebody that I knew that I could call and get it fixed right away. So I'm going to add in here pet and wildlife safe. Right. Because we want to make sure I know there's most of them use stuff that's going to be fine around your pets, but um just as a as a precaution um who are we on meg or loretta or am i i'm messing it up every time i know that's right could i just um uh, point uh don just brought up a good point too i recently found um you can get beekeepers to remove bees if you've got an issue so i did that in my own house actually recently because we had a basketball size uh, bees nests that need to be removed and a guy came and took them for free and, and is relocating them rather than killing them hmm. i think we need to do a i think that a, has to be i think that has to be honeybees though right i i think so yeah i don't yeah. i don't know much about it it just he came looked at them and said he wanted them so yeah 
I love that, um, especially with, you know, all the we're hearing about bees in general, um, you know, the, the dangers to the environment with, with them not being around and things. Um, I love that idea. I We might want to like do an infographic that we can all share, because one of the things we want to do is make sure that we're um, educating the public. And that's one of those things I don't think most people, most people would just knock it down and they aren't doing it to be mean. They're just not thinking that there's another option. You know? Um, I love that. We got Loretta. Um, I'm I'm out of ideas. You're out of ideas. You're our first one to ring the bell. All right, come back to me. Let me think about this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so I was going to say, we actually have a guy in the office who is a bee keeper and a bee mover. So we have one of those. That's It is very important that we move them instead of killing them. Only in Springfield, Missouri, would you have an in-house bee keeper? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and, his honey, and he makes it and he does his own honey and it's very good. So you get your local honey and that helps with your allergies and it's all good stuff. Um, um, re a lot of the older neighborhoods, I think really we need to make sure that we know tree people um, and we need to know good tree people because there's a lot of people out there advertising that they can do trees and they're not taking care of the trees. Um, they're either, you know, they're topping them off when they need something else. So just really good tree service. I'm going to put professional. Because I think that there's a lot of people that just come by and trim trees and oh for sure and they yeah well I'll just do it for the cheapest price well okay then it's gonna fall on your house so yeah. <laughs> we just I, in my neighborhood on my street we, it's an older neighborhood lots of pine trees and I noticed um, this past couple of months we had three different companies uh, homeowners had three different companies um, you know come down and um, <coughs> take their trees down. And I thought it was interesting how neighbors weren't talking or seeing like, oh, OK, that corner house used whatever. Let me call them because they were all different companies. Yeah. And I mean, there's so much risk with trees, not only to your own property, your neighbors, everything else, you know, they're yeah, I think I think finding the professional ones um, and finding somebody that can get to you when you need it. That's that's a big one. It's a big one that we don't think about. Okay, I've got a couple. Yes. So um, DJs for events. Love it. And then I was going to go back to the photography thing. Um, I'm going to start up. Um, there's a group and you can search for it online. It's called the Tilly Project. And they do end of life photos for families who are dogs are getting ready to cross the Rainbow Bridge. Oh, I like that. So, you know, that it's, it's emotional because, you know, that's family. We know. I like that. I am going to add in. I'm going to add in wildlife rescue, wildlife. Um, removal. Removal, rescue. Um I think that's something that comes up more often than a lot of us think. And I think it depends on where you're at. Um, but I think the more that we, you know, the more that man takes over more space, the more problems we're going to have with this, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Chris, what you got? Well, I just thought of this. It's not on my list, but I think I'm going to add it when um, the end of life dog photos were mentioned. We have a pet cemetery and cremation place that really is the only one that services about a 30 mile radius around here. So people often don't know what to do if their pet dies at home, you know what, and this cremation service is on call so you can call them and they will meet you there even on off hours. So I don't think a lot of people realize that. That is so I think that I'm is a really good one. Add that to my list so people know where it's located. That's a really good one. Yes. 
Bev, who do you have for me? So we have daycares, preschools. We get asked about those all the time. Local libraries. And then also local play parks for kids, playgrounds. Uh, we have splash pads that they can take. Yeah. Love it. Where are we at? Dawn. Um, yeah, we, um, we have a, a company here that will come to your house when it's time for your pets to cross the Rainbow Bridge so that you don't have to bring them to the vet's office. So they will actually do it in home. Oh, huh. And a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people use, use them. You know, it's, just, you know, sometimes it's hard to transport your dog when it gets to be that time. So yeah, they will actually- yeah, We've always used the in-home that euthanasia. Yeah. It is, we it only is have much better. Yeah, we only have one company that I know of that services this whole West Michigan area. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I don't even know. I'm sure, I like I know of a couple of vets that I'm sure do it, but I, that's one I didn't think about, um, especially with big dogs and yeah. Yeah, we have several. I think we have, last I checked, we had a list of about 10 in the area that do that. And even so, I've heard that it's hard to get one to come right away because they're so booked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have mobile groomers on there too? We don't have mobile, but that's a good one. Okay. That's a good one. I'm going to go ahead because that also does euthanasia as well here. I am going to add one that we didn't, that we missed at the, the emergency vet. Um, you've got to know the emergency vet in your area or at least know where they are because it's inevitable that the first time your client needs it is not going to be when your vet's office is open, you know, and just knowing where they can go, um, I think we all know this. You end up being your clients go to not only for house, but also for everything animals locally. Right. So right. I think that one's a big one that I know we keep um, a list. There's a couple that stay open late. And then there's like one that's only open overnights and weekends. I don't know if you guys have that. Like another one is a good painter. Like we need. Real and a painter that can cover smell. That knows how to get dog smell, cat smell. You're right. Knows how to use kills. <laughs> and I think there's just knowing what to do. Like, I feel like some of them say, oh, it's not a big deal. I can do it. And they can't. And then others do it and it's fine. And I don't know what they're doing. And I'm not, I don't, I'm not smart enough to figure out what they're doing. So I just want to find the guys that do. <laughs> well, we have to have a good painter because all the walls are texturized here in Florida. They call them orange peel walls. And our ceilings are texturized too. So if somebody put something up and speckles over it, you need the painter to know how to go back and texturize it so you never know that there was a, a speckle repair done. Yeah, I have I have those two in my house and I just, I it, don't know how to fix it, so. I have a carpet, com you know, carpet company. I go to my contractors and find out who they know. Yeah. I have one contractor who knows somebody that can do almost do anything I need. I've used them so many times. I call my little network. You know, we had carpet cleaning. You know what we didn't have was carpet repair. Because that's a different group of people. But now it's gotten so good that a lot of times you can you can cut a chunk out of carpet and not have it be very noticeable. I have a company that carpet cleaning company that does repairs. So if you don't oh, know perfect. someone, call your carpet company, your cleaning company. They may do it. As long as I found you know, some guy that patch, you know, where, you know, the dog scratched, you kept the dog in the bedroom and they tore it up by the door frame, you know, something small, uh, your carpet people could probably do that. As a former so teacher, I get a lot of, oh, sorry, go Shelly. As a former teacher, I get a lot of people that ask for tutors for their children. Oh, that's a good one. And then we're kind of in um, the Johnson County burbs. So everyone's asking for best nail salon, best hair salon, yeah, sure. um, a good masseuse.
I can't ever spell that word. Masseuse. <laughs> yeah, I can't ever do it. It's going to be massage person. <laughs> massage therapist. There you go. Um, I would say chiropractor too. And I'm not a big, I, I have back problems. I'm not, it doesn't work for me, but I know that we use it a lot for different dogs. And I think it's, it's definitely, um, it's definitely something you want to have in your. In and your acu acupuncture too. I've used an in-home vet that does dog acupuncture. You also need dentist. We get asked about dentist a lot. Good dentist. Then you might as well throw in orthodontist. Yep. Oh yeah. Braces. Pediatrician, if it's not on there. We have a group on Facebook called uh, Winter Garden Rants and Raves, where everyone asks for things all the time. And that's where I pull a lot of my contractors from. Yeah, we have, we have one around here. It's um, like each county has, it's called Gig It Done. And you can ask for, you know, any type of contractor. Um, but you have to be careful because, you know, everybody with a hammer will jump in there and say, oh, I can do it, I can do it. Um, so you definitely want to get references. Um, but there are- if These aren't the contractors putting in the post. So it's the people who have used somebody that are referring somebody else. So you look to see if the same person is being referred over and over and over again. We have the same thing here. We have Orlando Real Estate Mastermind where all of us real estate agents go to ask for contractors who other realtors have used if we're outside of the area that we would normally have a contractor for. Oh, that's a great idea. I'm going to add in drywall, right? Because that's a big one, like tapers, mutters, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And a trim carpenter. I'm dealing with one where um, their dog, like, chewed all their door frames off um i might have one of those at my house in my bedroom right now <laughs> this one's bad like it's every door frame this dog chewed off the corner no this is just our bedroom <laughs> um you know but it's one thing again it's something that i don't think every agent necessarily needs but we certainly need those people you know um Sorry, I don't know why my dog's freaking out. He's mad at somebody. Okay, He's I've got a la last one and I need to hop off. I've got a call to be on. Um, asphalt and blacktop driveway reseal. I don't know if that's what you call them, blacktop resealers. And I was just going to mention epoxy floors like for the garage too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That could go in the same. Mm -hmm. Joe, I just mentioned blacktop driveway reseal and then Cassandra you know mentioned the or was that Cassandra no or Shelly Shelly mm -hmm. the garage floor epoxy people and I'm, I'm gonna need to hop off gang so nice I have a call to be on bye right, Christina thank you everybody take care bye so I just thought of one more um that I get asked about a lot is um survey companies. Oh yeah. Like for vacant land or um, like my, my daughter bought a house last year and she just got a dog. So the fence needs to be replaced because it's really old and the dog obviously finds all the holes to get through. Um, so, and the neighbor swore that the fence was over his side of the property line. So um, yeah, so we had, we knew exactly where we could put the fence. So Oh, your Joe, your dog is mad about something today. Because my wife took the other dog for a walk, so he's mad. <laughs> Structural he engineer. Um, what are we missing? I feel like there's still something that we're missing, I and mean, we got almost yeah. two and a half pages here. What about auto repair? Ooh, mechanic, yeah. And you then you that only everybody only trusts their own mechanic and body right. shop. Um, I was going to say handyman because almost every time I talk to somebody like that, I'm just 
uh, prospecting and I ask them if they need anything, they need a handyman. Everyone needs a handyman. Yeah. That's big business down here just to put up ceiling fans. <laughs> Deck repair. Yeah, deck repair and resealing. Yeah. Did you have florist down? No. Luckily, I live by the best one in the greater Kansas City area if anyone ever needs anything here. <laughs> That's what I didn't think about. Wedding venues. A list of good restaurants. Chamber of Commerce. Oh, there you go. I got doing? I gotta go. I have another call. See you guys. Bye, Bye, Bye. I think we've got a pretty darn good list here. This we is have a coffee really shops good. on there. We don't. Um, and maybe we Oh my gosh. Play. Everyone always asks, what's the best coffee shop? I don't even drink coffee, but I have a whole list. See, right here. There's a gift card. Wow. Well. I would also say just park, not necessarily dog parks, but parks in general, right? Like I don't take my dog to dog parks, but I'll take him to the park least, right? Um, I do the same. I don't take my dog to the dog park. No. We don't have you permits. I was interesting to hear that you have to get a permit to go to the dog park. Wish they would do that. And then, you know, everything's seasonal, like we're going to go out this week and film all the, um, our favorite local pumpkin patches. And then, you know, it could be places to go look at Christmas lights, you know, all those different type of seasonal things. Yeah, that's a nice idea. Seasonal events type. Yeah, we're coming up with a list of, uh, you know, pumpkin patches, haunted houses, you know, just all that fun stuff going on around us right now. Ooh, why are you being so loud, man? This is a heck of a list. And I will send this to everybody. You guys don't have to keep track on your own. I will send it to everybody. Um, Can I share some happy news real quick? Yes. Absolutely. So I was in and out of this call because my husband, he has been, um, since he had COVID or since he had the vaccine, they don't know which, he um, has had cardiology, cardi heart problems. And um, he actually walked the entire Appalachian Trail when he retired from law enforcement. And then when the COVID stuff came around, um, he's had significant heart issues. And we just got good news from the electrocardiophysiologist. I was in the office when you guys started. So um, anyway, so he's cleared and good to go. Awesome. Congratulations. Great. Thank you. It's that been a long great. year and a half. I know when, I think when you and I first talked, you were at the hospital with him, weren't you? Probably. Yeah. I think, yeah, actually there was a time. So we've been struggling with this for about a year and a half. And he said, go live your life now. So that was good news. That's awesome. That's really good to hear. Um, Thank you. Well, guys, I really appreciate you all jumping on. I think this was a really fun one because I think we all definitely everybody here probably found somebody they didn't think about what should be in their Rolodex, right? Um, I will take this and I'll put it out to the whole group um, as a document so everybody can go through and, and have this information. Um, before I let everybody go, is there anything that I missed that's like, I feel like there's some I I feel like whenever I do this, I always miss one like really obvious one. <laughs> Is it going to come out like a Google Doc form that people yeah, can add to? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll send it as a Google Doc. 
because we'll all think of something afterwards. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. I think we. I think this is a really good stuff. You know what we don't don't have? Don't Home ever inspectors. tell Aaron that we don't have mortgage people on there. And I would say, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to say insurance broker because those are the ones that can search and find the right insurer for you based on the breed of your dog. That's just my thought. Well, here's another one that I need here is assisted livings or facilities like yeah. that. People move here and they bring their parents with them and they need a place for their parents to live so they still feel independent. We've talked about how we can help from an agent standpoint when people are moving in from a rescue standpoint a lot of times people when they're they, they have to give up their animal and having resources there and being able to connect and kind of be find a way to be the center point to help those people when they need once they're going to assisted living help them get the animal placed and help them get their their house taken care of too Sorry, I think, guys. I think it's making relationships with the like sales staff and support staff at those facilities. I know. Can I say like I was so proud the rescue got all of the dogs into foster before the hurricane came? Because I'll tell you, I've been here 12 years and I think that's the fourth or fifth one I've been through and by far the scariest one of all. Yeah. Like my um, son said, mom, I've never seen you scared. Usually everybody's at the bar having a hurricane party. And I'm like, not this time. Yeah, I'm glad that you guys were safe. It sounds like everybody within the group, I think, has everybody I've talked to has has um, made it through. It does look like it's going to be it's going to be a lot of cleanup. You know? Yeah, KW is on the ground for sure down there in Southwest Florida. Yeah, look, I mean, definitely going to be a lot of cleanup, and I hope that um, I mean, it's South Florida; they always bounce back. Like that's kind of what you guys do. I think the unfortunate part was that they kept saying it was going to hit Tampa. So Tampa evacuated and they prepared for it and it didn't, it stopped and turned in earlier. So those people didn't expect that it was going to hit there, which is why they're taking a lot of grief. People are like, well, you should have evacuated. There was no reason because yeah. we were told it was a direct hit for Tampa and then it decided to start shifting and then it was a direct hit for Orlando. So that's when it got scary here. <laughs> And we've well, been I'm, around and a lot of our owners, they don't live here. So if we know they don't live here and can have access to their house, we need to go secure their patio furniture. We need to pull all our signs out of the yards. Wow. Um, and then we have to go around. That. And then after the fact, we go around and we like let them know if there's been any damage and help them with contractors. So we're really busy during hurricanes. Um, I can imagine. Yeah, our broker's like, yeah, you don't want to leave your sign in the yard. It's got your phone number on it <laughs> in case it ends up in somebody's car or house. But then everybody has their patio stuff out. So we've got to go and make sure we put it in the house or push it up against the wall and make sure that we secure it. Uh, grills, everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we well, were I'm glad you, you weathered the storm. It sounds like, um, I don't think there's a lot. A lot going on down there, but there's a lot, a lot of help coming. So I think that's the, the good thing. Um, our five dollar Friday is still out there. If you guys have not, um, that's going to one of the the rescues in South Florida. So um, we did that did for this exactly. Um, and I'm really excited for those pack members um, for Thursday because I've got a couple things to talk to everybody about, and I will get it scheduled here shortly because um, I think Thursday has been the overwhelming and i will record it for everybody so everybody can um can see it afterwards as well um but have some kind of exciting ideas and thoughts in the background i will put this together and i will get it onto um onto the group so everybody has their rolodex list and i'll put it as a google form that way uh, if you think of something that we didn't think of please add it into the form so everybody can has, have access to it Hey, Joe, how do you pick? I know this week was a no brainer. How do you pick the rescue that's going to get the $5 Friday? So we kind of have just been going around in a circle. Like we, we, we haven't done it for a while. What we really want to do is we want to use it as much as possible for immediate need situations, right? Like the hurricane. 
Gotcha. Um, you know, like the floods we had here or, um, you know, somebody's taking in 60 dogs from a hoarding case, those kind of things. We want to try to use it for, because what happens, unfortunately, is we get probably five or six requests to do donations on the page a week. And unfortunately, I can't let everybody, like we all work with rescues and all of us, every rescue we work with needs money. Right. And so if we mm -hmm. opened it up, it, that's all the page would be. So I'm trying to, as people ask, or as people bring it up, try to find those things that are, Hey, they need, they have an immediate need. This is something that's time sensitive and put it around that. Okay. Cause I have a local one. I went and visited them this week and they had, um, their back kennels were flooded. I don't know what happened exactly. So they are down space because of that. So they, if we could get them on the list, maybe. Um, Absolutely. That would be um, great. Do me a favor, send me the info, send it to info at realestatepetproject.com. Um, Cause then Jamie will get it too. And we will make sure we get them either next week or the week after. Info at realestatepetproject.com. Okay. Got it. <clears throat> So for everybody that can be there Thursday, it's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you all so much for coming. I will put the recording on. So anybody that missed the beginning um, or missed the end for that matter, it will be on. And I'll share. I don't think I've shared with you guys. We have the YouTube channel. And I don't think I've sent it out to everybody. But I will get that sent out to everybody as well. Um, but otherwise, guys, thank you so much. It's been a great, um, a great discussion. And as always, have your pets. Stop, don't drop. <laughs> we should add that one in too i just started doing the have your pet spayed and neuter because bob barker is not there to do it anymore well that's what we always end our videos with adopt don't shop <laughs> that's awesome well thank you guys so much and we will talk soon thanks All right. Bye. thank you